Thank you very much. I want to give you a flavor of the exciting work that's happening in the Oxford Martin School. We focus on many things, but the interface of technology and society is actually key to what we do. Technology will provide many, many solutions, but it could also be the most dangerous thing that we bring to the world over the few coming years and decades. So how do we ensure that these technologies work for us and don't have unintended consequences? We've always used technology. Technology is the reason why we are where we are today, our level of civilization, and our huge achievements, not least in the last 20 years of globalization, of super connectivity. We connect it in ways which will make innovation more rapid and ensure that technology speeds up. This can provide the solutions for our most pressing problems, the problems of poverty, the problems of food security, the problems in all other ways in our lives. But they could also provide dangers. While you're with us, your life expectancy will increase by about 12 minutes due to the technological developments and our knowledge of what kills people. But that won't be the true everywhere in the world. We want to ensure it's widespread. The fiber optics revolution, which means that one of these fibers in Nairobi now brings 1.2 terabytes per second, the total installed capacity in the UK 50 years ago, is growing exponentially. This provides enormous potential to allow people everywhere to be part of a global community. The yellow here is people in the world that are less than an hour from a big city. Over two-thirds of the world population is connected. We connect it in other ways. This allows us to share ideas. It allows us to use technologies to share solutions around the world to the biggest problems we face. But it also brings with it new risk. Because we're more connected, we are more vulnerable. The revolution of invention is going on at an increasing pace. Things that were novel 15 years ago are updated. What will be there in 10 or 15 years, we don't know. But we do know that there will be unintended consequences. We do know that this technology has an upside and a downside. And what we're trying to do is ensure children in Soweto or in the Andean villages become part of a global community. They can use this technology to enhance their prospects for the future. And at the same time, that this connectedness does not become their greater vulnerability. So it's a time of an explosion of ideas, a real explosion of genius around the world being unleashed. But with this comes what we've seen with the financial crisis. Finance was brilliant at using these technologies. These fiber optics created the conditions which allowed the financial crunch. New inventions of derivatives. The institutions lagged far behind the inventions of the technology. And what we've seen is systemic risk. This isn't new. Technology has always had unintended consequences. We don't know what the side effects will be. But we've got to push on. We can't use this as a barrier to technological growth. Governments have to work with society and with scientists. That's why interdisciplinarity really matters. That's why communities like this and conversations like this matter. The atom provides enormous potential, but we've seen its destructive power. And it's just one example, of course, Einstein highlighted this, of how we have to push ahead with technology, but at the same time recognize that the unintended consequences or the use in the wrong hands can be disastrous. So we have to create the governance structures. We have to create the social awareness. And there can be long leads and lags. We're now understanding 200 years after the Industrial Revolution what the consequences of our dependence on carbon is. It's taken us 200 years to realize that. It has to take us 10 years to be able to unwind it, to be able to get off carbon, to be able to ensure that we can find other solutions for energy. And new biopathogens <coughs> are benefiting from exactly the same things that DNA sequencing, which is going down at an exponential rate, has benefited. It will provide potential, but it's the greatest risk, perhaps, for us in the future. A new Ebola or smallpox coming out of a small lab by crazy people. So we have to understand how we can allow these technologies to develop. And the question is, how do we harness the power of new technology? How do we harness it in the way that we always have historically, but at a faster rate, it will be coming more rapidly because of our superconnectivity? How do we stop systemic risk? How do we ensure that we have the upside of technology and not be carried down by a downside? I believe that this explosion of potential around the world, the 300 million people in the first time in higher education, the connectivity we have through fiber optics and through other means will allow us to find the solutions. But it's really up to work out, us to work out whether we're able to advance these solutions rapidly enough and with perspectives which will allow us to be happy in the future. We may be cloned, but I hope we live for a long time and rock on. Thank you. <laughs>